Welcome to the Section 4 video of the Bracket Assembly tutorial, Applying Loads and Constraints. In this video, the model will be constrained and loads will be added. These loads and constraints will be relative to the geometry. Since the mesh is associated to the geometry, FEMAP applies the loads and constraints to the model. First, let's make sure that both the arm and base bracket geometries are showing. Expand the geometry item in the Model Info Toolbox and show both the arm and the bracket. Expand the model item in the Model Info Toolbox. Right click on Constraints and select New. Set the Constraint ID to 11 and name the constraint Pinned Base Bracket. Expand the new Pinned Base Bracket item. Right click Constraint Definitions and select On Surface. Select the washer surfaces around the bottom two holes on the base bracket. Set the title to Pinned Base Bracket and set the type to Pinned No Translation. Pinned constraints mean that the associated mesh will be fixed translationally in the degrees of freedom of 1, 2, and 3. Click OK. The mesh attached to these surfaces is now constrained in all three axes in regards to translation, but can still rotate. Right click on Constraint Definitions and select On Surface. Select the unconstrained pad areas on the bottom of the base around the pinned holes. Set the title to Sliding Base. Select Arbitrary in Coordinate System and select one Nodal Output System from the drop down menu. The Nodal Output Coordinate System is the coordinate system that the analysis results are reported in. In this case, it is the same as the Global Coordinate System. This coordinate system defines the axes that are used for constraining motion. Then check TZ, which means there will be no translation in the Z axis. Click OK. Right click on the Loads item in the Model Info Toolbox and select New. Set the ID to 11 and enter the title Arm Loads. Expand the Load item and the new Arm Loads item. Right click Load Definitions and select On Surface. Select the inside surfaces on the holes through the clevis of the arm. This menu shows how many different loads you can add to your model. In this case, we are going to apply a bearing load to the clevis. Set the title to Total Bearing Force on Surface. Select Bearing Force from the list on the left. Set the magnitude to 500. Uncheck Normal to Surface and click OK. Set the tip of the vector to the given values. Keep the base values as 0 for x, y, and z. And then set the tip coordinates x to 0.436436, y to 0.218218, and z to 0.872872. This vector doesn't hold any special meaning and is just used as an example on how to input a vector. This vector determines the direction that the bearing force will act in. Note that you can see the loads and constraints in the graphics window if they are enabled in the Entity Display toolbar. This concludes the Section 4 video of the Bracket Assembly FEMAP tutorial, Applying Loads and Constraints.